So hello to all the participants. I know that uh, people are joining us from different parts of the world. So whatever uh, hour you have, um, I hope you are having a good uh, day or just starting a good day as well. But uh, before we, we start our webinar, I would like to introduce ourselves. My name is Kenneth Sanchez, and I'm the Chief Officer of US, Canada, and the TAM offices of V7. We are located in uh, Bridgewater, New Jersey. We also have uh, with us today our special guest, uh, Birgitta Dreyer, who is a Senior Multi-Channel Manager at Novo Nordisk, and Vitolas, uh, who is a Senior Account Executive at Salesforce for Marketing. Uh, for some housekeeping uh, messages, I uh, would like to let you know that for those who would like to ask questions, please do it on the chat. Uh, we will be collecting the questions uh, during the course of the webinar, and we will try to respond all the questions by the end of, of, of the webinar. So let's, let's start. Uh, customers are getting more digital, more mobile, and more sophisticated. But what do physicians require most at this specific moment? Without doubt, relevant content, personalization, and consistency in whatever interaction they are in. That's why it is crucial for a modern marketeer to use modern practices and methods of building next generation digital journeys that connect technologies, data, people, and systems in order to create engaging customer experiences. Unfortunately, reaching customers across every channel is easier said than done. According to Gartner, over 90% of marketeers struggle to seamlessly connect more than three channels on a buyer journey. But while new technologies have created a customer landscape of almost limitless channel options, they have also given us the tool to effectively navigate the landscape. And this is omnichannel marketing so what kind of result do marketeers get by using more channels in their automation workflows versus those who use just one channel of course marketeers who use more channels will be more successful than those who stick to one uh, let's say automatic emails on this slide you can see that that the customer retention rate compromises 30 4.8% for single channel campaigns compared to 66.12 for campaigns including three or more channels. So in general, marketeers who are using three or more channels in campaigns earn 90% higher customer retention than those using single channel marketing, uh, marketing campaigns. And now let's figure out what is the difference between a single channel, multi channel, and omni, and omni channel, and why does it matter? So let's look at the definitions of these terms. First of all, what is single channel marketing? It's one channel, obviously, and refers to the ability to interact with your target audience via only one channel. This approach reduces marketing investments and organizational complexity. However, the risk with this approach is missed opportunities as your target audience must be using alternative channels. So omni-channel and multi-channel marketing are two very distinct and separate marketing strategies. Even though both focus on the use of multiple channels to reach ACPs, we would like to admit that in general, companies with well-defined omni-channel customer experience strategies in place achieve a 91% higher year-over-year -year increase in customer retention rates on average compared to organizations without omnichannel programs in place. Consequently, pharma marketeers must make the shift to focus on omnichannel efforts to increase HEP loyalty and internal revenue. Omnichannel experiences don't just happen. They require planning, development, testing, implementation, and ongoing optimization. They are insight and data-driven, dynamic, and highly personalized. We should plan and develop data-driven experiences to track customer engagement to each step of the customer journey, regardless of the channel or, or device. Automated data analysis provides customers insights in real 
real-time business intelligence that is used to extend the buying experience across channels and devices, continuing to evolve a dialogue with customers that enables sales and delivers relevant customer service when and when it is needed. So here, in this very slide, you can see some of the wins you get with omnichannel marketing. First of all, you get a great opportunity to interact with your target audience via channels they prefer. By developing a unified system of customer communications where all channels empowering each other. Also, omnichannel marketing enables you to increase consumer engagement and conversion, and you can build customer journey to engage your audience with the information they need and are interested in, and in this way, you will get a higher response. Furthermore, with omnichannel marketing, you can reduce customer acquisition costs by developing channels combination to serve customer demand to win their loyalty and, of course, avoid non-effective spending. Finally, you get to solve the ultimate challenge of any content-based multi-channel strategy, delivering the relevant content, one that, that, one that a customer really appreciates, and once there's a constant flow of data via the connected channels, you can track the customer preferences and behavior in a qualitatively new way, transcending the limitations inherent to some channels and seeing the whole picture. There are things that you can only see once you get a bird eyes view of the entire customer journey. So omnichannel grants exactly that. The opportunities that open are immense. First of all, communication becomes much more effective. You no longer waste your energy trying to interact with the customers along the channels they really don't want to use. With direct, laser, precise, personalized communications, you can be reasonable should you do, you do exactly what's needed and your metrics reflect the actual output. Omnichannel opens the way to improve brand performance in a previously unexpected way. It is one thing to just have a bunch of channels floating out there disconnected and quite another to be able to direct customer engagement across them in a consistent way. Once you are confident enough in managing customer experience across ch the channel spe spectrum, you can provide more holistic, more consistent brand messaging. When a customer sees that, okay, for example, at face-to-face, calls rep tell him something that supplements, add value to what they can see online and read in an email, they naturally feel better disposed to communication. With omnichannel, measuring communication is getting more advanced. You can track KPI for each channel, measure impact on sales and engage ACPs, and patients alike with target promo campaigns, and all of this data is ideally exposed in the CRM. All of this is, in the long term uh, run, a prerequisite to winning loyalty. As mentioned above, this largely depends on consistency, a factor that is often underrated in practice. But this is also about personalization and high quality of content. Granted, quality content can exist with, with or without an omnichannel approach. But in omnichannel, their simple are more tools at your disposal to know what actually brings value and what doesn't. If you don't learn from one place, you will track that elsewhere. In turn, value translates to loyalty as far as customer relations go. So here, here uh, let's look at the major omnichannel communication milestone. First, we need to figure out the pain points and customer targets and provide audits of digital channels. Then we create the main concept of our omnichannel strategy, set goals, global, per brand, define the target audience, develop key message, determine communication channels, and set KPIs. The next step is to segment a database and develop a data model. Once we have finished with customer journey design, we start creating content for every channel, meaning building templates for each asset type, plus a medical content development, etc. Once the goals are set, channels and touch points are defined, customer journey and KPIs are developed, and omni-channel strategy can be launched. 
After the successful launch, all the interactions are, are truly analyzed. Metrics and reporting allow, allow life science to de deliver more personalized interactions and high quality service throughout the, the relationship. So with the wizard platform, which is the creation of our group, the seven, is the unique solution for omnichannel content creation. For six years in a row, we're very proud of this, eWizard proved to be an effective digital solution for global life science companies that now has grown to be an omnichannel communication platform for pharma companies worldwide that supports the cross-channel integrations and sets new standards for pharma content creation. Using eWizard, you can build powerful omnichannel infrastructure, putting the figure of the HTTP in the center of the picture. The omnichannel marketeer original visualization is not just a dashboard with cumulative figures, but a complex customer journey map. This is a, a representation of the possible route that the customer follows on the way from encountering the key messages to making the final decisions. To bridge the customer strategy with the overall omnichannel excellence, V7 has integrated the eWizard platform with Salesforce Marketing Cloud. This allowed eWizard users to create and update high quality mobile friendly email templates, but also enjoying direct connection with Viva Vaults and the Marketing Cloud. This solution covered all the stages of an email campaign from email creation to its distribution and analysis, offer, offering a solid ground work for mailing campaigns optimization, and brands can easily send emails without the help of an external agency. This is critical. Another major benefit of this approach is that Omnichannel allows to transcend the inherent limitations of each channel, making the message heard in its entirety adjusting the taxes to the idea, not idea, to the channel. With Omnichannel, your message becomes holistic. The audience can hear all of it with our augmentation and answers to their questions. And you see the Omnichannel method allows connecting your existing marketing solutions and tools into a robust, unified architecture that enables to build and control interactions on a large scale. Omnichannel marketing is all about connecting and creating coordinated experiences among channels, experiences that are interchangeable. After all, an omnichannel approach is one that should be rewarding not only to perfectly harmonize customer journeys, but to company well-being as well. Now let's look deeper at V7 role in omnichannel development. As a full cycle digital services provider, V7 maintains three main pillars of an omnichannel game. The first one is omnichannel technical infrastructure. Your existing marketing solutions and tools are connected into a robust, unified architecture. The second one is the digital communication consulting experience, which allows you to apply, uh, apply the best practices of omnichannel customer engagement and expand it. And finally, the journey campaigns for HEPs and patients. The seven experts help create unique, customized solutions for your own omnichannel branding strategy. This allows to create content that pulls the levers where necessary in a precisely defined way without extra work and resource allocation. In this way, the omnichannel approach becomes cost efficient in terms of content. So let me now introduce Vitalis with the Salesforce Marketing Cloud Sales Manager, and he will be sharing with us a demo session on how that works for, for them. Thank you, Kenneth. Everyone, uh, good afternoon. It is coming to a late evening, so we will uh, make sure to keep you engaged. Um, let's take a look uh, into how uh, Marketing Cloud um, as, a, as an instrument, as, as, as your multi-channel communications platform can actually help you establish uh, these processes um, and 
make sure that you do um, continue your communication, the support of your HCPs, of all of your audiences um, across the channels. So this is a quick overview of the home screen of the Marketing Cloud. It's, it's very important to understand that Marketing Cloud is an end-to-end -end solution and it offers uh, the tools that um, allow you to do the multi-channel um, communication right um, and, and creating those journeys so we talk about email studio if you can see at the top there we have all of our studios with um, uh, that represent each of these channels so email studio that's a full esp allowing you to build your content build your emails templates and actually set the personalization within them we have mobile studio and this is the um, tool for your SMS campaigns. Again, everything is set up within Salesforce. Uh, we also have Mobile Connect, which is our uh, mobile uh, app um, communications tool, meaning that you can connect your mobile application and actually set up mobile push uh, messages, in-app messages and alerts. We also have Social Studio. This is a now a social channel um, instrument uh, for your posting of, of your social posts, also for engagement of your social community, as well as doing social listening. Advertising Studio is um, an ability to actually use all of the known data about your customer to create custom audiences for your advertising campaigns and actually add advertising channel to the journeys. Web Studio is an ability to build your landing pages. So again, we are talking about personalization across specific um, uh, targeted landing pages for your audiences. And Interaction Studio, this is a real-time interaction management capabilities where all of these um, uh, channels are synchronized for the next best offer uh, presentation uh, at any given moment in real time. So these are our studios that encompass all the digital communication channels. Um, the second part, we have builders. Builders are actual constructors or tools that actually help you to set up, to build your personalization, set up your automation and build customer journeys. And we've recently added another category, which is our Einstein. And this is a very um, exciting uh, functionality of Marketing Cloud. This is our artificial intelligence. As you can see, we have now a long list of all the different features that actually help you to maximize the effectiveness, to increase the, uh, the, the effectiveness of your marketing campaigns, but also to make sure that you do communicate uh, with the right uh, communications channel at the right time with your audiences. Let me go into the audience builder and into the contact builder to showcase the important part around the customer data. Every project Marketing Cloud starts with integrating your data sources with Marketing Cloud. So uh, all the data sources about your HCPs, about the other audiences that you do communicate and you, you, you actually target your marketing campaigns for. Um, that data can live in different data sources. So the main one would be your CRM system, then we have your ERP systems, e-commerce, and on and on and on. So all of these data sources can be integrated. Then you build your data structure here and create categories. And then marketers using Marketing Cloud can start to use that data for your marketing campaigns, for personalization of the content, for automation, etc. So let me jump into the actual journey builder. Okay, super exciting part of the tool, of the platform. And let me show you how to actually build a multi-channel um, uh, journey. Now, every journey will have a, some sort of a goal associated to it. Like it can be a sign up for the webinar or it can be a purchase or you know any kind of goal that actually you here link to your data that's coming in into Marketing Cloud, the one that we just looked at, right? So you can actually physically track the performance of these um, journeys. Now we can start a journey in any different way. We can have an API event, uh, a trigger from another system. We can just use our own data that we have access to and build an audience. Um, it can be a completely third-party system 
uh, sending you an event, but you know, multiple actual um, ways to start a journey or to send someone into this journey. So we let's say we have um, uh, an audience, and the next thing we can do, of course, we want to target them with, um, let's say, an email. So first thing we're going to do, we're going to choose an email. Uh, we can click here and choose which actual content to send them, after which we can actually check have they opened it or they didn't open it, right? Now, if they did not open uh, the, uh, the content, then perhaps we're going to choose another um, channel, like we can have a push notification, which is great, uh, straight into the inbox, fantastic. We can also check have they actually um, you know, engaged on that message or not. And we continue to making sure we effectively target our uh, this audience, right? Uh, we can engage any other channels as well. Let me just get rid of this real quick. Uh, we can engage other channels as well. As you can see, we have SMS channel, or we have um, an email, sorry, an in-app message as well. In here, there's a very good example of how Marketing Cloud uh, integrates with a local printer to print out a physical letter by post. And we also have the advertising channel as well. There's, there's a, uh, there are a lot of ways how to control the flow of these journeys from having a specific decision split that you can own, you can set up by ourselves, we can have a random split, we can actually join the paths. There's a lot of flexibility in here. But what I want to show you is, again, how to use artificial intelligence that actually works in the background and analyzes your data that's coming in the engagement data and actually helps you to um, um, to speed up your um, engagement um, approaches. So I'm going to choose an iSign engagement split, and in here it actually um, um, is going to allow me to choose several um, several scenarios. So this is where uh, our artificial intelligence analyzes the engagement likelihood. So a likelihood to open an email, likelihood to click an email or you know stay subscribed, etc. And uh, the uh, and uh, so Einstein actually puts a score and based on that score it, it then splits this whole path of people uh, let's just say open um, likelihood. Let's let's choose their likelihood of open an email. So fantastic. I know that the first two are uh, um, perhaps have a high uh, probability to open an email and I will use an email channel to target them. Uh, this makes absolute sense. But then once we go down, the likelihood decreases. And obviously I need to choose a specific, um, a, a more targeted method. So while I'm still going to use an email channel for this specific um, path, I'm going to also use another channel, so push notification and potentially even an SMS, right? So now, where likelihood decreases, I'm also using additional channels to make sure I bring my message across, make sure I reach um, the, um, the customer, right? Um, but I can also use an advertising um, channel as well. I can just drop an ad audience to here and say, look, everyone that's on this path, I will actually uh, put them into an audience and then send it to the, uh, let's say, Facebook uh, or, or Google advertising account. But let's say for the remainder, okay, my demo account is slightly getting slow. Um, and then for the remainder two paths where the likelihood is pretty much, well, this is where you would choose a message. I'm going to close that for a second. This is, uh, and for the last two paths, we have a, obviously understand that the email engagement isn't going to work well because the likelihood is very low. I can go ahead and, you know, send them maybe a direct mail by post. Fantastic. Now the printer is printing. Or I can go ahead and say, you know what, where the likelihood is non-existent, I can actually create a lead and send all people in this path to our call center. Okay. But just before I send this, activate this journey, I want to make sure that 
um, our Einstein artificial intelligence actually sends the emails at the best time possible. So I'm going to use another feature, send time optimization, where it will actually uh, optimize the time and even the day of the week when to send these emails based on the historical previous engagement. So this is a great example of how we use Journey Builder um, and artificial intelligence to find the most uh, effective channel of communication as well as including other departments uh, of our organization in making sure we eventually reach the goal of one or the other journey. Okay. Okay, so this is a great example. Um, I'm going to finish off by showing you the uh, our analytics and reporting um, capabilities uh, within Marketing Cloud. Now, this is uh, this is powered by our a recent addition into the Salesforce family, um, a technology called Datarama. As you can see here, we have built actually uh, uh, this dashboard specifically for your industry. And as you can see, this dashboard actually takes data from multiple sources, uh, very different sources to one another. We, we have here our social video um, networks. We also have our programmatic buying tools, um, other analytics tools. GA, Tableau, also Salesforce Marketing Cloud, of course, as well as any other uh, sales data or even revenue data, right? And we are able to combine that data and actually bring the visibility to you into a proper performance uh, metrics and visualizations um, to really understand how effective are your marketing efforts, okay? Anything from your specific campaigns across uh, multiple channels to tracking your KPIs, as well as really understanding even your agency's involvement across the maybe more of an offline channels. Um, so, so yeah, again, a very important task to um, understand is that um, thing to understand is that even the Rama uh, also is powered by our um, uh, Einstein by our artificial intelligence. And it actually gives you additional insights within your own data to say that there's a very good example here is that, you know, what are the emails with this subject and, you know, uh, in this specific audience actually has a much higher conversion rate than others, right? And you can actually go ahead and share this data um, if you want. But it's a great insight that's, again, that's generated for you automatically. Okay, so very detailed understanding of all of your uh, marketing efforts across channels, across the business, and how it eventually affects your bottom line. I hope you enjoyed this demo. Uh, there's a lot of additional things to uh, discuss. I invite you to, uh, you know, get in touch with us. You know, let's maybe book a demo, a more detailed demo uh, that's maybe more fitted for your own needs and requirements. We're happy to do that at any given time. So. I will now pass uh, to Bridget, and uh, we'll actually share the insights on, on, on how they create uh, these multi-channel journeys. Thank you. Yes, and thank you very much for that. Let me just check here whether you can all see my screen. Great. So I guess you can you can see the screen right now. Yes, we can. Yes, perfect. So my name is Birgitta Dyer and uh, I'm working with multi-channel marketing in uh, Novo Nordisk in our global office located uh, here in Copenhagen, uh, Denmark, where I'm dialing in from at the moment. Uh, and what I will be taking you through today is, uh, is a little bit about how we work with the uh, multi-channel customer engagements. Just a second. I just need to make sure that I can actually switch the slide here. Yes, here we go. So first of all, why are we actually working with, uh, with uh, multi-channel customer engagements and how do we do it? Uh, and then finally, uh, providing some concrete examples about uh, how and, or what it actually is when, when we mention customer engagement journeys. So a little bit along the lines with what was just presented as part of the demo here. So how do we actually work with the, with the platform and these kind of things here. So a little bit about the why here. I think most people uh, dialing into this call can all agree that our world is definitely changing and more rapidly uh, at the moment, given the COVID-19 situation. 
So at least from a pharma company perspective, we have at least seen that our direct sales model has been under quite some pressure, which has only been increased by the coronavirus lately. Um, but there have been some other challenges that we have faced over the last couple of years. So some of them have been highlighted on the left side here. So we have, for instance, seen some pr price pressures uh, across uh, a number of markets. We have also seen that it's been more and more difficult to get the access that we actually need in order to, to you know, uh, provide our products to, to patients out there. We have also seen uh, customer preferences and behaviors changing. And that goes very much along the lines with the digital transformation that we have seen over the last couple of years. So with all of this in mind, uh, we and Owen Wallis have a, an aspiration to create the right capabilities to enable both more meaningful and efficient customer engagements. So what do we actually mean with this? Well, um, with more, we mean that the number of engagements um, that we can get through an extended reach. So that's all about the, the additional channels that we are adding into our engagement mix. So now it's not only about face-to-face -face or not only about digital, but also about how do we actually cover ourselves, I mean, cover the customers and their needs the best way possible, by also doing some, some mixed uh, engagements uh, with them. Meaningful is all about the quality of our engagements. So this speaks very much to the fact that we need to, to know our customers and their preferences and tapping into their agenda with, with all the touch points where we, are, uh, where we communicate with them. And efficient is all about cost per engagement. So obviously there is also uh, an interest here to lower the cost per engagement, which is easily done when, when you work on digital channels compared to some of the face-to-face -face channels uh, most often. So how do we actually work with this? Um, in all notice, we have defined four essential capabilities uh, for successful planning, but also execution of multi-channel customer engagements in this case here. Uh, you see them in front of you here. They are customer engagement planning in the upper left corner here in the, the light blue. We also have Content Hub, which is all about the fast production of content approval and also sharing content among our affiliates. Multi-channel Hub is where we execute our uh, customer journeys, uh, optimize them, and uh, finally we have customer engagement analytics where we look into the data and the insights. So we ensure that we constantly improve what we are doing in terms of these customer engagements. All of these capabilities, I would say, cannot be done without the right people and capabilities in place. So we have rolled out a quite a com comprehensive program across uh, Novo Nordisk because we see that even though you have all of these enablers, you are they are really worth nothing unless you have the right capabilities and people to work with it. So there's obviously also a lot of change management that needs to be driven along the lines with, uh, with this which we are rolling out in a huge program where we make sure that we build those capabilities, particularly at the local market level, because those are the ones actually knowing their customers and those are also the ones who need to execute these uh, campaigns. So let me just talk you through them one by one really quickly. So first, customer engagement planning. This is really where we, uh, we try to understand our customer needs and preferences. So here we work with some elements such as uh, adoption letter. So we, for instance, defined uh, based on, on some comprehensive market research that has been uh, done, we have defined a number of channels and type of content that is more relevant depending on where you as a customer are on the adoption ladder. So are you completely new to a product or are you pretty aware of the product already? Then there are different types of communication that you, that you can already uh, look into there. So this is more, consider this more the rough lines of, uh, of the customer journey. So the overall design of the touch points we want to include in our engagements with the customers. So that could, for instance, be saying that we want to to have uh, to work a little bit with our search engine optimization because we simply want to make it easier for our customers to find us online. Um, it could also be to to run some email marketing campaigns with some clear links into into our affiliate HTTP websites for them to read more about a given topic. So it could be many things, but again. It's the more strategic elements of what the of the touch points we want to engage our customers through. So after we have sort of created the rough lines of our of our plan uh, of our engagement plan, then it's all about the content that we need to look into. So in this case here, we have uh, we have developed a content hub that is really our in-house uh, production partner for easy, fast, and also cheap production of uh, content. So what we have seen is that by adding all of these additional channels to our engagement mix, we also need to produce much more content compared to what has been the case previously. 
So we actually had actually calculated a bit on it, and we figured that we probably need to to create three times as much content uh, as as we had to to do back in the days. And that's also, I mean, it's not only about more; it's also around the varieties of content that you that you work with. So simply working a bit smarter with it. And the way that we do it is uh, is, for instance, that we have this large library of modules. Those are predefined modules that you can see under number one here. So that could be image or text pieces or uh, that together with a logo, I mean, different combination of content that can be uh, drag and drop by the, our affiliates into, for instance, a desired layout for a, an email or a website. So now this is considered sort of the brief uh, into our dedicated content hub partners, which we have available in all of our markets, working with multi-channel uh, customer engagements here. And then they basically produce the piece of content, um, which could be this email or a website. So they're also facilitating the review and approval of that piece of content. And finally, it's being uh, deployed into uh, so, so that we can uh, activate it in a customer engagement journey. So that's really, uh, you can say, key or key foundation for actually doing what we are doing here. Another element I want to touch upon here is also that we have a brain portal. Because when you work with content, one thing is being faster and more cheap and and leaner in the way you produce content, but it's also really key that you make it easy for affiliates to share content across. So in the brain portal, we make it possible, for instance, in a market like Switzerland, to get inspired by some of the content created by Germany, for instance, and, they, and then get some inspiration across there. So it's definitely also about working smarter with content and steal with pride where you can, so we don't have to invent everything from scratch. So moving further down into multi-channel hub here, this is really where we execute our customer journeys and also where we optimize them through the, through the data that we get in. So now we are getting one step deeper, you can say from the, from the rough lines of the, the plan in customer engagement planning, we are now double tapping some of the touch points that we have outlined here, such as an email marketing campaign leading into a website. And then we start to work very, uh, you can say in a high resolution way with the, with all the elements that goes into the, to that, such as decision splits. Uh, do we want to play around with A-B split test of content? Uh, how do we work with uh, subject lines, pre-headers, call to actions, et cetera, in our email communication, for instance? So let me talk a little bit about what multi-channel hub is all about in, the, in No Nordisk. Well, this is where we execute and optimize our customer engagement, as I just mentioned. But in order for that to, to happen, it's really key that we have some established systems and processes in place. So let me start by taking you through our technology ecosystem. So this is really the platform that enables us to, to run these customer engagements. So on the right side here, you will see uh, the multi-channel hub. So here you will see uh, all the channels that are sort of uh, um, under the umbrella of the multi-channel hub. So we have marketing automation platform uh, built on Salesforce Marketing Cloud in this case here. And that is really where we set up and execute our customer journeys. That is closely tied together with our affiliate websites or ATP portals. The whole decision of whether you do uh, affiliate websites with ungated content or whether you want to put some more premium content on that gate is very much of a local uh, discussion, which we are supporting the markets with. Um, but the benefit of having, you can say, an ATP portal with registration and login is obviously that you get some, some data from, from the ATP, allowing you to identify them and then use that, uh, that identity information to target them very specifically. For instance, in an email marketing campaign you're conducting uh, in Salesforce. This is also where we collect consents. And as we all know, consents is really our license to operate. So it's very crucial that we ensure that we have the right consents for the communication we are we are engaging our customers with. This, uh, these two platforms are also closely uh, connected with our webinar platform, making sure that data is actually floating across these platforms so, so that we can engage with all of these uh, platforms uh, in whatever we are setting up in our marketing automation. So that's sort of the right side of the fence here. Now let me move to the left side, which is where you'll find the CRM platform. That is also closely integrated with our multi-channel hub and all the channels I just uh, presented over here. So in the CRM platform, this is where we have e-detailing, obviously, and, uh, and also keep a customer 360 view. Uh, we are also able to collect consents from our CRM platform in this case, so simply having the rep collecting that consent, uh, which can also, I mean, provide a consent about marketing communication. So suddenly the rep is 
is enabled to also collect the relevant consents for us to do uh, marketing communication. This is also where we do approved emails. So that could be, you can say, a, a sales rep after a given discussion with, with an ATB about a given topic. Uh, then the rep could actually trigger an approved email. So exactly about that topic that they discussed about. So that is very much of a one-on-one -on -one, uh, email uh, that is triggered from the rep, the personal rep, into that uh, ATP after the dialogue that they had. Uh, they also called rep-triggered emails sometimes or pre-approved emails. Finally, what is really interesting is uh, the whole aspect about rep-triggered journeys, which we are now able to do in our CRM platform. So this is actually where our sales activities and our marketing activities start to meld together into one big, uh, into one big uh, image, you can say. So in this case here, rep is actually able to, to trigger a journey that has been predefined and prepared by marketing. Um, I will show you a concrete example of how that is done in a second. And then all of that data is feed back into uh, the CRM platform, enabling the rep to actually drive some more engaging uh, conversations with the ATP in the field. Finally, before I show that concrete example, I just want to touch upon the, the lower part here, the customer engagement analytics. Um, so this is really where we keep all the aggregated interaction analytics, because as you can see, there's a lot of data floating from all of the platforms here. So it's important for us that we keep the data uh, in one uh, central place for us to be able to act upon all of this uh, data and actually extract some insights from, from what we're doing. In customer engagement analytics, we are working with the four overall types of uh, KPIs. One of them is reach. So here it's all about defining the relevant universe we want to target in the given market. And I want to highlight relevant here because obviously you can, you can do the, the mail canon and you can do display marketing as back in the days, but it's really important that we become very clear on who are we actually tar targeting and reaching with our communication. Coverage is all about how do you want to cover yourself in the engagements that you have locally. So is it only face-to-face -face or is it only digital or is it a combination of those two? If, for instance, you have a product launch locally, then usually you would engage a bit more on the face-to-face -face, uh, channel in this case, and probably a little less on the digital channels, at least in the beginning, to, to build that network and the connection. Um, but if you, for instance, have a more mature brand in your market, you would naturally uh, probably lean a little bit more towards digital channels, also because there's a limit to how, how much can you actually speak about a given product, for instance. So this whole thing, how do you want to set it up in a 40, 60 model or something similar, that's very much of a local discussion. Depth of engagement is something that we look very much on when we uh, execute customer journeys in the marketing automation uh, platform here. So for instance, how, how frequently are we engaging with our customers, but also are we engaging with them uh, you know, in depth, or is it more high level engagement? Like, for instance, this webinar here, uh, are customers actually sitting and watching it to, to end, or are they sort of dropping out after 50% of the webinar? Those could be some of the things that you want to look at. Uh, channel contribution is all about which channels are actually performing, and then, uh, and then have a look at that. Maybe you don't want to use all of these channels to target the same type of customer. Maybe you want to adapt it a little bit compared to, to your customer you are engaging with. So this is the concrete example I promised to, to pull out here. So this is probably showing a, a move towards a more omnichannel approach from, a, from an old Nordic perspective, in the sense that by having the CRM platform integrated with our multi-channel hub in this case, uh, and the platforms that we have here, in this case, then the rep is able to, to trigger a journey that has been prepared by marketing in this case. So let's say the rep and the ATP, they, they discuss a given topic. Then the rep decide to trigger this journey here about that given topic. Um, so in this case, the system triggers an email that is being sent to that ATP about this given topic. In the email, we obviously would like the customer to open and engage with the content. So in this case, we put a clear call to action for them to, to visit our uh, website to read more about the given uh, topic here. Here, we want to make it easy, easily for our customers to navigate into some very specific content. So it could, for instance, say that, that we want to show them some ungated content up front on the website, but then we are, you can say, navigating them into some more premium content, which requires them to register on our ATP portal, for instance. And that allows us to get a little bit more data on the, on the ATPs. It could also be that we have it freely available on our website. Again, that's very much a local 
discussion because it uh, it goes along the lines with the local regulations. So in this case here, we could have a conversion goal saying that we would like our customers to watch 80% of a KOL interview that we have available. And in that case, they are considered a conversion in our book, you can say. All of these engagements are then feeding back into the timeline view in our CRM platform. And that is really where you can say the the rep becomes much more aware of what is the preference actually of our customers. And then they can start start to speak into that specific area in the, in the field when they visit the ATPs. So it's also important that we have some clear processes in, the, in place. And as you probably could hear from the walkthrough of, uh, of Salesforce, there are a lot of features and functionalities to, to stay on top of when working with these uh, customer journeys. Um, and at least in Novo Nordisk, we have, uh, we have actually figured out that we don't really have the right capabilities uh, in place. So we are building on them slowly, but we at least saw the need for actually having a dedicated multi-channel hub partner that can work closely together with the markets uh, on and supporting them in both the planning and execution of their customer engagements in general. Um, the reason why we want that close collaboration is obviously that the local markets, they know their customers best, but they are simply not able to both work strategically with designing and working on the customer engagement plans and also uh, have you know the the knowledge about how to to manage uh, Salesforce Marketing Cloud in this case here. So this is exactly what the multi-channel hub partner supports our affiliates with. So in the markets, we usually have appointed one uh, multi-channel lead who works closely together with uh, the multi-channel hub partner, and the multi-channel hub partner then takes the affiliates through uh, five essential steps to make sure that we can actually execute and get insights from the customer journeys. So first of all, they sit together and they, they set a goal. So we need to figure out when are we actually being successful with, uh, with what we are doing. We have learned that it, it pays off to be very concrete and specific about your goal setting. So it could be like an engagement goal to have a 20% click-through rate of an email, for instance. It could also be to have 150 ATPs registering to, um, to a webinar, for instance. There are different ways to, to play around with these goals, but fact is just that we need to become better, I think, in pharma to work with this goal setting and determine when are we actually being success, successful with what we're doing. Second step here is segmentation. So um, I thought it was pretty straightforward, you know, working with marketing, but I've actually been surprised to see that segmentation has not really been a big thing in, in, uh, in pharma for quite some years. The reason is that we have done display marketing, so our approach has been more, let's hit them all and then let's see uh, how well we're doing. Now we definitely need to figure out who are we actually targeting with our uh, campaigns here and are we being relevant to this particular target group. So we have learned in our notice that we are more successful when we are very clear on our segmentation criteria. And this speaks very much into the data model um, as, as we just uh, saw before. So here we have, again, since we have the integration with the CRM platform and our multi-channel hub, with all the data leading into Salesforce Marketing Cloud, we have quite a lot of data that we can play around with and then start to build uh, um, data extensions in here. So it could, for instance, be that we want to target the only endocrinologists and diabetologists in a given market. Uh, then we could say that we only want to target the customers on adoption ladder three. So that could be regular users of our product. Um, it could also be to add more elements such as target class A and B, which is typically the customers that we visit more frequently with our field force, or it could be to target a specific region. But all of this really depends again on bullet number three here. What channels are we, uh, are we using or what content are we actually using in our campaigns? So I would say this is also something that the multi-channel hub partner supports the affiliates quite a lot with looking into the local data model seeing what data do we actually have available. Uh, so how can we slice and dice on the segmentation criteria? Because very often affiliates are not aware of this. Um, channel and content is all about where do we meet our customers and with what type of content. So here it's important that we prepare long-term and also valuable content that is fit for channel and purpose. And what I mean with that is actually that we prepare content that is fit for email if we want to send an email. So we have also have a little bit of a tendency to put a lot of text and wordings into an email. But fact is just that email and websites are not the same thing. So in email, we try to be very uh, lean and specific and have some clear call to actions, maybe play around with 
some SOPI clients pre-headers to engage with our customers in new ways, uh, maybe have a few images in there, but the text part and the more in-depth um, explanation about given topics, it could be some medical education or patient support material or these types of content, we want to put that on, uh, on our website. Uh, so simply directing our customers in that, in that, uh, into that, that touch point. Uh, Long-term planning is also quite important. Uh, we have at least learned that we need to we need to work more up on front of uh, of our content, having a content plan and be well prepared of the customer journeys we are executing. We cannot sit today and plan. Oh, I want to get this out, and then tomorrow we just execute it because there is also a bit of testing that goes into this. So we actually test up content and make sure that it is. Uh, channel agnostic so that it actually fit the, the device that our customers ex is expected to, to open the content on. Uh, so we need to test it and also test the logic of the journey. And that takes me to bullet number four here. So how are we actually engaging with our customers and when? So this is really where the, the multi-channel lead in the market and the, and the multi-channel hub partner, they work closely together on coordinating the cross-portfolio customer journeys. What we want to make sure here is obviously that we don't run uh, campaigns at the same time. So we need to make sure that, they, that we are not spamming our customers, but, but are quite uh, neat in the way that we organize our uh, campaigns. And that requires a bit of planning and organizing. Finally, the multi-channel hub partner sets up the, um, the journey in, in this case, in Salesforce Marketing Cloud using the journey builder tool as we just saw. Uh, through, I mean, but but still through a dialogue with the multi-channel lead in the market to make sure that we that we encounter for everything. And this way, we can also provide some recommendations to the market about which decision splits or engagement splits or channels could we actually start to play around with and provide some recommendations based on previous experiences. Insights is all about the the learnings that we uh, get out of the customer journeys that we execute. So here we obviously follow our customer journeys quite closely when we have executed a campaign, look into the data and make sure that we gain uh, some relevant insights that we can feed back into the next planning of customer journeys that we are that we are doing. And I should also mention, I didn't mention that, but if there are questions, I think we have a short uh, Q&A at the end. So uh, please hang on for, for that. I just have a couple of uh, more slides and then I'm done with my part here. Um, but one I, what I want to dive into now is actually some concrete examples of uh, how do we actually build these customer engagement journeys. And you probably remember some of these uh, visuals here from, from the walkthrough of Salesforce Marketing Cloud. So in this case here, I just want to bring forward an example of a campaign that we have been running, um, which is a campaign consisting of two journeys. First of all, a registration journey, simply to have our customers uh, register on our ATP portal. And we followed that journey up with a new journey um, where we said thank you for, for registering. But this was also a possibility to re-engage the customers who didn't register on our ATP uh, portal. So let's just dive into it. And I'll be talking you through some of these uh, aspects here. So overall, our goal was to get 200 reg registrations at the affiliate ATP portal. But we also had a little bit of a hidden goal of eventually starting to expose product communication. So here, I think in general, what we are doing in Nordisk is to work with the funnel thinking. So first, create some some kind of awareness around our our area. It could be medical education, or it could be around the Nordisk brain. But you don't want to just uh, push product communication out uh, up front. You need to build some some level of trust before you do that. Um, segment is uh, in this case, we decided to target diabetologists and endocrinologists. So we defined that before setting up the journey here. And the journey was running in this case from October to December and consisted of uh, seven unique emails. And this is actually quite interesting because it tells when you do the detailed level of customer engagement planning, you need to think a little bit differently uh, around your marketing material and your communication you are sending out, playing around with different rarities. But I will explain how we've done that in this case. So in this case, we have sent out the first email where we urge our customers to register uh, to the ATP portal here. Uh, here we also showed some unbranded videos, uh, some, some nice and engaging material, just to show a little bit about what we, what we can actually offer. Then we, uh, then, we did, then we checked whether they clicked the email in this case here. And that's a little bit back to the demo we just went through, because here we can start to engage our customers in different ways if they didn't engage with our content in the email. 
And what is interesting about checking for clicks in this case is that you actually check, do they engage with the specific content pieces in that email? And that's a little bit different from checking for, for openings, uh, because openings is more about, is are we doing good with our, with our subject lines and pre-headers in an email? But not really that much on the content piece within the email. So here we simply wanted to see, are we good enough with our content in, in that email? So for everyone who didn't click uh, the first email here, we sent them a new variety of the email with new content, but also new subject line and pre-header to see whether we could engage with them in a different kind of way. Then we check whether they registered for the on the ATP portal. So for the ones who didn't register, so that means they clicked the first email, but they didn't quite they register on the ATP portal yet. Then again, you could try and engage with them by saying, oh, you're almost there, and then try to re-engage them like that. Um, and obviously, this is only sent to the ones who didn't uh, who didn't register on the portal yet. So then we check again whether they registered. So what you will probably see here, I don't know whether you can see my mouse. So for everyone who actually engaged with the second emails we send out, we are we are having them joining our customer journey up here again. So that means before we send the next uh, next communication, we just want to check whether they registered uh, on the ATP portal. So for the ones who registered, we uh, we sent them a KOL video number one here. Um, that could be some interesting piece of content. It doesn't necessarily need to be a KOL video, but but we decided to do that. So some some engaging content that also speaks a little bit about what can they actually find behind the behind the gate when they register to the ATP portal. So then we we check again whether they actually clicked and engage with this email here. For the ones who didn't click the email, again, we can find other ways to try and re-engage them into, uh, into the ATP portal again. And then we could send them a number two email. I mean, you really, de you really determine the logic here, but that's, uh, that's just a practical example of how we have actually done it. And finally, we sent them a KOL video number three, where we slowly start to drip some product communications uh, in there. Because at this point of time, they have engaged quite uh, significantly with our content. So now it, it should be okay to, to slowly drip some communication. I want to also highlight here that we have, uh, of course, inserted some, um, some wait by duration uh, splits here, just to ensure that we don't spam our customers, but we keep a nice and decent timing between the different uh, communications that we are sending out. So this is uh, to the second journey that we uh, that we set up, which is sort of the thank you journey here. And the whole idea with this was to engage the ATBs who didn't register in the first journey. Um, so obviously to say thank you to the ones who registered, but also to re-engage the ATBs who didn't register. Um, the segment was obviously the ones who registered uh, in the first journey, but also the ATBs who didn't register. And I'll explain how that is being built up here. Uh, journey timing lasted for one week, and it consisted in this case of three uh, unique emails. So first of all, we defined the segment, then we check whether they registered. And here we actually use the Einstein uh, send time optimization uh, that is built into Salesforce Marketing Cloud, simply to have the, the system help us to determine the best send time for, for this particular customer group here. So if we follow the upper line, so that's basically the customers who registered on the ATP portal. We say thank you for, for the registration. Um, and then we could even send some more uh, engaging information. For the ones who uh, didn't open that email, we tried to send a new email uh, with a new subject line and pre-header, but only to the non-openers of, uh, of the first email in this case, to try again and re-engage them. And obviously you can continue here with the uh, leading into some social media, or you could connect it with other, other channels, obviously. This is just the, the simple logic I'm, I'm going through here. So for every one of our customers who didn't register on the ATP portal, we wanted to know a bit more about their preferences and, and their ideas. So here we use the random split test. So we did an A-B split test, uh, parting up this segment in two parts. So for 50% of the, of the segment of the non-registers, uh, we send them an emotional email to see whether they want to engage more on emotional type of content. And for the other 50%, we try to send them some more scientifically related uh, content to see whether they could potentially be interested in that. And here you can also see that we played around with the Einstein send time optimization to ensure that we actually reach them at their preferred time of the day, for instance. 
So here it's interesting to see whether they open that email or not. If they didn't open it, we actually try to send the same content, so the same emotional email to them again, but try to engage them with a different subject line and preheader. And we did that for both of the campaigns. We could also have turned it around and say, okay, for the ones who didn't want to open an emotional email, should I then try to, to engage them with a scientific email um, to see their preferences towards that? So there are different ways to play around with it. But I just think an important thing here is also to try and do it. So simply just uh, try and build up a customer journey, see how customers react. And then that's always learnings and, and inputs that you can take and use for, for next customer journeys. We also have, a, that's the very last example here, but a brief example about how to build a webinar journey. So in this case here, our goal was to have 250 ATPs to register to a given webinar. The segment was all ATPs with a consent, and again, the endocrinologist and diabetologist, but we could narrow it down even further, depending on the, on the data model that we have in the given market. Uh, and this journey consisted of two unique emails. So again, the Einstein send time optimization in this case, and then we start to send the first invitation for, for our customers to register. Then we check whether they open the email. If they didn't open the email, then we actually, again, send the same email, but with a different subject line and pre-headers. And for the customers, who uh, then we check whether they register to the webinar. And for the ones who didn't register, then we try to send them an invitation, number, number two, um, to see whether we could try and re-engage them this way around. You probably all noticed it. I mean, these days there have been a lot of webinars going on, and you probably see that you, that you receive some follow-up emails and some reminders around these things and that's exactly what this is um, email email marketing basically so after the registration we want to to check who actually uh, who actually registered for for the webinar here so in this case our goal was to to reach 200 atps or to get 200 atps to participate in the, in the webinar uh, our segment was everybody who registered uh, in the previous journey here and this one consisted of four to six unique emails so again, we, uh, we, here we selected the specific target group of people or customers who actually registered. Then we sent them the first one, so a confirmation of registration to the webinar. Then we start to, to drip them small uh, reminders. It could be one week prior to, one day prior, and finally one hour prior to, to the webinar. That's usually a good practice around the webinars because people simply tend to forget uh, that they signed up for these things. Uh, then we check later on whether they actually attended the webinar and then you could send different types of communication depending on whether they attended or not. Uh, and obviously you can you could try and re-engage the customers who didn't attend, potentially with some, with some other uh, type of communication. So what I think here is important to mention is really that it's a lot of uh, trial and error about what we are doing. And it's better to just go and do it than, uh, than to to know that you need to have all data available upfront because sometimes you simply don't like for instance profiling and and atps you know preferences um, those are a dif difficult details to get when working in farm also because we are quite depending on the data that has been logged into our crm platforms so here it's very much about tracking behaviors by looking at how do they react to different types of uh, communication uh, that's at least how we are working with it uh, at the moment yes so um, that's all from, from my part here. I don't know whether we should take uh, questions uh, now. Yes, yeah, so yes. thank you very much, um, um, Birgitta and Vitola, for these great presentations. Uh, we have a really great audience that has been engaged with us through all these great presentations. Uh, please, uh, do you see, I, I see a, a couple of, uh, I see a, a question here from Javier uh, Florent, how, how much do you think the quality and creativity of visual content push the customer engagement through your communications, email, website, et cetera? Or do you think it is not depending so much? Uh, would you like to answer? Yes, yes, I can do that. I think it's very much depending on the, on the content. I think it's uh, a little bit back to the, the wording that content is king. And we definitely see that there's a huge difference on how our customers engage and react to, to content, depending on how we build it up. But I would say, of course, it's about the design and having some nice pictures and, and engagement elements. 
but it's also about serving it in a very simple way. You probably know it from yourself. You know, when you receive an email or you visit a website, you pretty easily get an idea of whether you want to spend some time on that or not. Uh, so again, having clear call to action and guiding your customer through what is it actually you want them to, to achieve by getting that email or visiting that website or going to that webinar and staying in for, let's say, 20% of the webinar or something similar. So, so I think it, it's very much about how you serve your message and make it clear of what actions should be undertaken by, by the customer. So really a good old customer journey practice is what we need to be better at in general. So it is, thank you so much, uh, Birgitta. And uh, we have uh, surpassed our time by 11, 12 minutes. So again, we are really grateful for all the participation, uh, people staying with us for the, for the presentations. I would invite all participants, if they have questions say, for us, to direct them to the same email that you used to re register. Uh, but again, thank you so much for your patience, uh, for uh, hearing our presentations. Uh, our guests, uh, Vitolas, uh, Virgita, thank you very much. It was an enlightening uh, uh, and productive meeting and webinar. So thank we, you did, uh, we conclude our web webinar and we we'll invite you to, to send your, your questions to us. All the best. Take care. Bye now. Thank you. Bye.